You're listening to the World Famous White Roof Radio, Wolfcast number 660, recorded September 19th, 2019. Tonight brought to you by CravenSpeed.com, MotoringStripes.com, and OutMotoring.com. Mini performance, speed, and style, it's OutMotoring.com. Hey everybody, it's DB in Arizona with a brand new episode of the World Famous White Roof Radio. We are resuming... Where the conversation had just, I just interrupted right, just right a minute ago. Uh, Todd and Chad talking about Todd throwing a code. Go. Yeah, because we, we talk about stuff and then we're like, oh, save it for the show. And then we always forget, right? Yes, we so always forget. So he stopped, which was, which was good. But, but hey, everybody, it's been three weeks since we've been around. But I was telling the guys, I <laughs> threw Todd, a, Todd, We're three weeks in a show because Don had to go to Vegas twice. Yes. <laughs> and, and Chad had to move. Yes. I, I, I did move and I'm sure it was profitable for him. Yes. yes, it was. Listen to the page. Yeah, listen did. to Black Roof Radio. Yeah, listen to Black Roof. I'll tell you. The, you know the comma, the commas were evolved. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I threw my first engine code in my JCW. I've had it eight and a half months now. Okay. Uh, pretty much got it January first. Right, right, right. Eight and a half months, and I threw my first engine code last week. I turned the car on, and and you know the check engine lights on, right? The you know yellow check engine light. Yeah. So and the cool thing is is when you've got the new minis with the screen, and I've got the navigation also. Right. So you go through to systems check. You know you go to the the car, and you're like, okay, it says I've got a code, so tell me what's wrong. And usually when this happens, um, I just know this from other cars. Mine's never done that. Is it'll say, hey, here's the here's an issue. You need to go to your dealer. You get it checked out. Uh, schedule service immediately. Right. So okay. I, have, I have an engine code on and I go, wow, well, what, what the heck is this? Right. Car running fine. So I go in and I look and there's no nothing stored. Is it all systems are fine? And I'm like, well, that's weird. So I hook up my, uh, my little code reader and everything. And it was yeah. a boost. It was just a boost press boost pressure fault. Turbo boost pressure. Um, it said boost, boost pressure was low. And I'm like. I've had this before. Usually it's when, you know, gas changes for summer, winter, you know, when they do that changeover, things just get weird and the temperature starts to change. Well, we don't have any of that going on right now. It's still summertime. It's still hot. It's still humid. And, um, you know, it stored a code in there and it was a permanent, you know, fault for Mm -hmm. what it was. And I talked to the guys at the dealer and I just cleared it myself. And I'm like, it's really nothing wrong. Like it did nothing. It was Almost like when you get a misfire and chat. Oh, you probably, yeah, I know you're talking about. Too. You know, you can get a misfire, and it's like once in three years, and you'll never get it again. And who knows? Right. Who knows why? Right? Like, because I see people posting all the time on the internet. They're like, "Oh, I got a misfire in cylinder three. What's the matter? Do I need a new head?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, people, people, people!" But that's what the dealership told them, and that's what they paid. Right, right, right. And you're like. Okay, reset the code and just drive. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I hate I hate to say that that's that's a solution, but a lot of times it's like mm, this is not. Serious you know, I'm pretty sure talk. replacing the head is going to be the fix for everything. Yeah, <laughs> low fuel pressure. Oh, put a new head in it. Get a problem with your top? Oh, pff, you're going to need a new head. Little, getting, little getting head. Flat, you getting a flat tire? New head will fix you right up every time. Well, we get all of these uh, second opinion cars in, you know, from the dealer, from other shops, all these things. You know, one shop told him that this guy was getting blow by from his piston rings and he needed a whole new engine. And it was, you know, ten thousand dollars. Right. And we're like, no, you just need new valve seals and uh, you burnt an exhaust valve. I mean, that's the only reason that you're here. You know, we pulled the head off, fixed it, had it done for, I don't know, twenty eight hundred dollars, something like that. He was ecstatic. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, that's really cool when you can do something like that, Chad. Yeah. Right? I think it's really cool. It's all about the right diagnostic, which is it what is. leads us back to Todd. You know, he reads well, the check engine light. He figures out what's going on. He's diagnosing the correct problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I don't I don't recommend that if you don't really know that much about it because I really didn't do – I just wanted to see what it was. And, and I had the same situation with the Roadster a while back when we had a thermostat go bad. I got a check engine light. And it's even more cryptic in the R56 generation mm-hmm. when you get a check engine light because it's like you've got no information and no way of knowing what's going on. So, you know, I've got a code reader and an app for my phone, and I plugged it in. And 
and uh, it was the thermostat. And I knew this can't go on. I mean, it's the middle of summer. I need to get this fixed right away. So right. I take it to the and sure enough, that's what it was. So it's it's informative from that standpoint, you know. And it gets you farther ahead than than where you were at, and at yeah. least gives you some of that information. Yeah, it's like peace of mind. It's like okay, either it's okay to keep driving or no, stop driving immediately, get it in because usually this is going to happen at you know seven o'clock at night. You can't take it to the dealer. You don't want to lose sleep. So if you've got a code reader, hey, give it a shot. Um, the one I use is a it's a it's Wi-Fi connected. You plug it into the onboard diagnostic port, and I've got an app on my phone, and nice. it's not. It's not free. I mean, I, the app was like thirty bucks, but and I wish I could tell you what I use, like Engine Doctor or something like that. Dash Commander. Yeah, I don't know. It's something. That, that's it's one the of popular the, iOS. Uh... The one that all the BMW guys swear by, because it's 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 focused. It's very BMW and Mini focused. Yeah. So it gives you a lot more than just your basic. Hey, this is the code. You know, go look for it and see what it is. Um, right. Yeah. And I'm a big I'm a big fan of that. And um, you know, also I can change the coding on my car, which is nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. The, what, you get to watch movies. Cool. You're driving down the road. Very cool. Oh, yeah. You don't do don't do that. You don't need to watch a movie. You're driving, dude. I don't. I have it set on. And, you, and you know what? Honestly, can I talk just for a second? This is really starting to just annoy the ever loving everything out of me. Yeah. I'm driving along on the road in Arizona, mighty my business. I'm stuck in traffic, whatever. Right, we're just cruising, stop, bumper to bumper, stop and go, doing my hour long, eighteen minute, eighteen mile commute, and I'm looking over, and I look next to me in this car, and and it's all these cars, and they're newer cars. These are all cars that were made after 2012, 2013, and I'm seeing people on the phone holding their phone to their face. Drives me crazy. How freaking stupid are these people that they can't figure out how to pair the Bluetooth on their phone to their car? Well, Good the other thing too is when I get in my car, when I get in my car, I mount the phone in the dash. It sits in its cradle, yeah, and it stays there. I don't need to touch it, yeah. And, and it's the beauty one of of two things of your Bluetooth, you know, connectivity, right? But car, but CarPlay, and I wish Gabe were here to talk about it because he probably still hates. Uh, CarPlay. He's he's up in the mountains or something. I have no idea where the hell he's at. He still hates CarPlay. Yeah, but I don't have CarPlay in the mountains. I've <laughs> learned to. <laughs> I've learned to really appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. It's not going to do everything. Well, Gabe hates but... CarPlay because he can't look at Instagram on it. I know. For what it is, it works, and it works well because I've also got Apple Music. Yeah. And it's cool because I can just go, hey, Siri, play, you know, some 80s rock, right? And it will. It'll make me a playlist on Apple Music, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Or you just tell it whatever. Scorpions you know? for the win, baby. Scorpions for the win. I want to hear Round and Round by Rat, you know, and it'll play it. It'll play it. Quality you, know what, you know what, dude? As soon as you said that, I swear to God, I'm like halfway to a mullet now. Oh, my God. <laughs> my hair just grew. Dude. He's shopping for El Caminos right dude, now. I saw some El Caminos this last weekend, too. I was like going, oh, look at that. El Camino. I like this neighborhood already. There's El Caminos here. Mm. Yikes. Anyway, well, I just had a complaint about the car thing, and I've got a fix for people I'm going to tell them about in a minute. Now, to, I uh, to go off on Todd's tangent just a little bit, you know, there's a lot of codes that are within the Mini that are not – they're very cryptic in what they're actually meaning. So if you have a misfire code, it could be a misfire code because you need spark plugs. It could be a misfire code because you need a coil pack. It could be because you burnt an exhaust valve or a high pressure fuel pump. So there's going to be multiple ways your car can actually misfire or even bad fuel. Um, so like, don't just automatically think, oh, it's a misfire. I need to just replace this. It's like right. you need to really know on it with that. But having the codes at least gives you the more information. So, right, right, exactly. And like I say, don't. Don't self diagnose and then go to the dealer and go, here, I know exactly what it is because just let them do it. You can even say, hey, I looked at the code. This is what it said. You tell me. That's the that's the nice thing to do. Or you at least see the code and then you stay quiet to see what they then tell you. There, that's the other thing too. Is kind of test. You could uh, you could use it as a check and balance system because of they're like, oh, well, you didn't have anything in there, you know, or you know. I thought you were no, supposed I, to I search frantically on the internet and. 
ask 17 people's opinion when you get a code and just determine that they're all wrong and then find every, that one random Facebook. that one random post on Google that says that it's uh you know uh, the right rear bent. third lug nuts loose Your and bent that's John- what they go with you get a bent johnson rod yeah. you get a bent johnson rod you're so, uh, more common than you realize i don't know yeah. i know it really is it really is all right, before, let's go ahead and get started with the rest of the show. Before we do that, you guys, I want to remind you about a couple of sponsors here underneath the White Roof. Let's start off with our good friends up in Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com, okay? So we were just I was just complaining about the whole car thing. First of all, I want you to fix that by going over to CravenSpeed.com. I want you to buy a Gemini mount for your Mini and for whatever other car is in your driveway. Christmas is coming up. I want you to get them for your kids. They make them now for damn near every car on the road. So go yep. over to Craven Speed. Punch up the Gemini car mount, pick the brand of car that you have, and just get one. Get one for every car. And just get it installed because it is the slickest phone mount for a car that you've ever seen. It's super simple to install. You don't have to... There's one that Todd likes, and it's really cool. And Todd's got one, and one of the girls out here in Arizona has it. And I can never remember the name of it. It's some German brand. And you go to the website, and it's first of all, it's expensive. And then you have to figure out what pieces you have to order to get it so that it works right. Because they don't tell you that. It's stupid. And by the time you're done, you spend like 400 bucks, right? <laughs> you go to Craven Speed, it's like 150, 160, 180 bucks, whatever it is. It's not very much. And you go, whoop, it installs with like a screw, done. Just go do it, cravenspeed.com. Also, if you happen to be one of those fine owners of a Mini Cooper R53, um, I want you to just take a peek underneath your bonnet. Chad will help me with the scriptures here. And we're going to look at your strut tower, your strut towers, and we're going to see if there's any mushrooming, mushrooming, which is basically, Chad, what, what's happening here is the, the, the strut towers are b- 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 ballooning. Balloon, they're ballooning up, correct? Yep. They're, they're out of shape. Yep. It happens this, when you hit a pothole. It's very common with the first gen minis in this beat. Part of the go kart like handling is because they're so stiff and they handle so well. These kinds of things happen. If you have an R53, first of all, awesome, good job. Second of all, you probably are already suffering from this because your car is going to be at least 13 years old. So this is already a problem they're having. Craven Speed is going to get you covered. So you go over to Craven Speed. I'm going to put links directly to both of these products. And you can get the Strut Tower Defenders, which is goes right over the top. Okay, and it's going to basically help if you don't have um, if you don't have the the mushrooming now. This will keep it from happening. If you do have the mushrooming, this will kind of help keep it from getting worse. Right, Chad? Correct. Thank you. And now, uh, and now if you want to do this yourself and you want to save a couple dollars, okay? So first of all, the Strut Tower Defenders, that's 140 bucks. Big deal, right? It's not that much. It's good money spent. But if you don't have that money and you still want to get this done, $75 gets you covered. So these are the under tower indurators. So these go underneath the Strut Towers. Okay, they're a little bit more complex, a little bit more difficult to install because you got to pull the wheel off and all the whole suspension thing, but it does the same yeah. thing. It just does it from the bottom instead of the top. Okay, I'm going to put a link to both these in the show notes. I want you guys to check these out. If you're rocking R53, this is what you need. Also, while you're over there, if you're on the R53, honestly, put in a pulley. Woof. Have some fun. Live a little. Craven Speed's got you covered there, too. Plus a whole bunch of other stuff. I want you to go over to CravenSpeed.com. I want you to check it all out. If you're going to buy something, use the order form, and then make sure that you leave a note there that says, hey, thanks for supporting White Roof Radio. We really appreciate that. So do they. They, of course, our friends over at Craven Speed. CravenSpeed.com. Thank you very much. Hey, okay. What should we talk about first? How about some news music? Oh, boom. That's all you, my friend. I know. News has been a while. Hey, there's um, a. Hey, wait, we we go back to you. and uh, one <laughs> Frankfurt Motor Show was going on last week, and absolutely nothing happened. Right, but weren't wasn't the GP supposed to be announced? It was, but they pushed it back, like Gabe said, probably yeah. to L. Yeah, who cares? Probably no. to LA, and it's funny because our our friend Joel was uh, there. Gert was there. Well, Gert. Oh, was Gert also, was there too. Yeah. Yeah, Gert was there, and did you see what he posted about it? I missed it. How much bullshit he said it was. He's like, he goes, man, it was 10 years ago the last time this show was any fun. Wow. <laughs> yeah, he was pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. And I think in general, um, big shows like that are just getting less and less, I mean, important. Yeah, they really are. Because really, what did, what did many, like as far as we're focused, um, 
Mini showed off the the electric car, right? And and the new JCWs, which we'd already seen both of. We've already read everything there is to read about them. Right. Anything that gets released anymore, it gets released um, um, in a photograph to Instagram and Twitter, and right. maybe a Facebook post, and then they'll roll it out to some journalist somewhere and some you know other spot, and they'll grab some kids from Jalopnik and Autoblog, and they'll say, yep. "Here, here's the new car." Why do we need to spend how many millions of dollars to go to an auto show? That's just dumb. That's just right, putting right. good money over bad. Well, and you know, it's so funny because it kind of follows what Apple did years ago when they stopped going to the big shows. Oh, right. When they and stopped going to CES. They start, yeah, and they started holding their own press conferences, right? Yeah. Where, like they did last, you know, last week where they showed off new watches and phones. I'm really, really proud of us for not talking about new iPhone stuff. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying that, that it happened, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, the fact that they don't go anymore, and it's starting to make sense, and it's trickled down to the automotive industry, where, like, the Detroit Auto Show is so unimportant now that many major brands don't even go to the North American International Auto Show. It used to be the big deal in the U.S. Right. Then you still got New York and L.A., which are mildly— They're big, know, big-ish deals. But even like we noticed that, that that in Frankfurt last week, it just seemed to be kind of a dud. Yeah, it just seemed to be a dud. So that's my two cents on auto shows in general. I think auto shows are dead for the most part. And yeah. It'll be more individual companies press launches and they're doing whatever. And I mean, the Tesla does it too. Tesla does a big launch on their own. They do, and, and then they put yeah. a car in outer space, and it goes yeah. viral on social media. That's exactly. what it's done. And the only thing you guys care about anyway is the new GP, and you know Gabe's probably going to be one of the first ones to get it anyway, so just pay attention to Motoring File, and he's going to get you hooked up. So, duh, just do that. Done. Yeah, and we're heard, like, um, this speaking of the GP, yeah, and uh, the fact that it wasn't at Frankfurt last week. Right. Um, I've been... Uh, uh, sent a couple of tidbits on this that are that were interesting and i have to clarify this if anybody else has read it on the interwebs oh. so is that the gp is is getting pushed back and it's looking like i think it's going to be 2021 oh really i didn't see that it, yeah um it's it, it's going into production uh i thought it was october next year okay um, but it still may be, and it's so convoluted, but anyway, they said it was getting pushed back. And if so, somebody goes, I heard a rumor and this was somebody from, uh, uh, from somebody from mini somewhere said that if it gets pushed back enough, the U S may see the manual transmission in the GP. Oh, I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, one, wait what? No. Um, but here's the, here's where the confusion sets in is that uh, what that is, is if it gets pushed back far enough, the GP may see the dual clutch transmission, which the Germans refer to as a manual. Oh, gotcha. It's not the typical automatic. They kind of refer to that as a manual. And I Got think it. that's confusion came in. So I don't want people to get excited that the GP could potentially come with a manual. No, they're just saying it's going to come with the DCT. Well, yeah. you are using your fingers. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well. But it's yeah. not. I mean, it's still a little confusing. It's not like it's the the SMG, the sequential manual gearbox, right? Which really still is a manual transmission. You still have to shift the car. It won't shift on its own, right? The DCT will shift on its own, or you can shift it. You know, put it into sport mode and use the paddle shifters, and, right? And shift the, it yourself. Right, right, right. So, not that people get confused. And this is the whole, you know, kind of lost in translation thing is how how the Germans refer to it. So, if you read those tidbits out there in the world. That's kind of my take on it. I kind of wish Gabe were here to talk about. Yeah, I but. think we're we're way overdue to get Gabe on, so we're I'm gonna push real hard to get him on the next show, guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. So, Speaking but, of Gabe, really quick, just in case nobody's following along at Motoring File, sometimes I wonder if you guys actually will read Motoring File or not. Uh, Motoring File is getting a new company car. Uh, this time, the Gabe will be configuring a uh, JCW Clubman. Which, as it turns out, Todd might get a chance to drive here in the next couple of weeks. So we're going to have all kinds of JCW action happening here underneath the white roof here very, very soon. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and hey, there's actually good news for once that on the show here and the, on the sales front for Mini. Hmm. Was that for August, Mini sales were up over the previous year. 
That's right. It was global mini sales, but hey, sales were up. Well, no, no, mini USA sales. Was that mini mm-hmm. USA sales? I saw global mini, global mini sales were up. I didn't see the other one. Yeah, that would make sense, though. Mini USA. Um, uh, <laughs> so they mini... beat. So they beat last year. <laughs> and so for, I'm yeah, sorry. We're... I'm sorry. That just that, that was just mean. That was I mean thought... and uncalled for. It really wasn't. That's on me, and I apologize. No, it was called for. It was completely called for. <laughs> it's still. But yeah, we were up like two point nine percent. Yeah, and I did I, see there, that. I think there was some funny business going on. I think a lot of a lot of dealers, you know. I think somebody in the office just went, oh, my God, honestly, if they post that we had bad sales again, can we just start punching cars? Yeah. And somebody sent a memo. I'm yeah, sorry. I don't know. Um, I we, We've at least seen the slowdown in, in dealer closings. Yeah, at least there's that. But, and, you know, I and, to, and in their defense, I've been seeing a lot of uh, uh, countrymen and clubmen on the road lately here in Phoenix. Yeah, well. Uh, and newer ones. Yeah, I saw a countryman on the road today too, and I, it was a very interesting combination. And I'm not sure I liked it. Yeah, oh, it okay. was black oh. with a white top, but then it had frails. What? Gr- gr- in the this was, countryman? You sure yeah. this, was, this was a mini? Yeah. That sounds yeah. like a Hyundai Kona. It no, has it's... silver root. That that kind of uh, um, like gunmetal silver oh, yeah okay. it, it was it was very light and it just i was not a fan with it because it really showed some weird body line things to it and it made it look tall and bubbly and you know you could see where like the as it uh, comes around the back window where they were trying to kind of give it that baseball hat look of the um the, the roadsters and stuff like that but it just it was like a miniature version of it and it just um it didn't sit well in my visual as i was watching it drive down the road and i saw it from multiple angles as it was kind of slowly pacing me yeah you're not like you're not the only one who thinks that because i know i i'm uh i'm bad at posting about this on my uh instagram you said it was black with a silver top no white roof yeah white roof yeah it looked like a white i mean I well, black it, well, I'm looking at black right now, and you cannot get a, if you order a black midnight black Mini Cooper S Countryman, at least with the iconic pack, you cannot change the roof color. You get black roof. They must have wrapped it. Yeah, I've it wrapped. Could have no, been, it, but it was definitely. A, I don't know no. if it was jet black, but I mean, it was definitely a dark body. It let me. Could let have me been a it super could have been an enigmatic maybe? black metallic because you can get that with a white roof, and that looks weird. Yeah, Hold on because I that's just exact, that's what it is. It's the enigmatic black metallic, which is a mini yours color, and you can get that with the white roof and mirror caps. Yep, I was uh, doing looks weird. thirty-five miles an hour, so I was close to it. But yeah. uh, well, Chad, I've wrapped. Uh, you're not the only one who thinks the white roof on the uh, Countryman is bad because I just looked back. I bet I've wrapped a half a dozen uh, new Countryman roofs. Yeah. In black, I just did one a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking at it. And that car's moonwalk. Gray. It was moonwalk gray with a white roof, and they okay. didn't like it. And then I wrapped it in gloss black. And it's a pain in the chukas to uh, uh, to wrap that because those rails don't come off unless you drop the headliner, and I never do that. Yep. So there's there's always a, there's a seam under the rail, but it's up so high you don't see it, and there's a little bit of a dune line there, so it's kind of hidden. Um, yeah. It, it's not that big a deal, but yeah, I've wrapped at least this year uh, about a half a dozen um, countrymen roofs because people don't like the the white roof on that. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, it really just does not look good. It kind of makes the car look the tall red. and bulbous, and it looks good with the chili red, I think, and, and that's a classic mini look. Well, chili red and white with a white top's always good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I wrapped the previous one. I did the car. The car was blue with a white top because it was a uh, a plug-in hybrid version of the Countryman, and they don't offer it in chili red. So I wrapped the car chili red, so it was cool. It was a, a, a chili red uh, hybrid Countryman with a white roof, and it looked fantastic. Got I it. think that was on my that was on my Instagram. Yeah, so. and Chad, I just took a screenshot in the Slack, so you could take that and go, yes, that's what I saw, because that's what yeah. I saw, and it does. It looks looks weird. It's, and I will say that if. Um, if you don't have a car, no matter what it is, yeah, it's kind of weird like that. Yeah. Um, yeah especially at that uh, fifth window in the back, you know, it's it, it does something weird there. Yeah. It's, especially it's, since it's, this one has that really big fender right by the door pole. Yeah, I'll see if I can make this. Uh, I'll link this up somehow or I'll make this image for this week's show if I can, uh, just because it looks bizarre. 
But um, if uh, you don't have a car that has a roof rail and you really want roof rails, it is possible to put those in if somebody who is skilled knows how to do it. Huh. Mini will tell you it's not possible. Got well, it. the countryman, the countryman comes always comes with them, and so does the clubman. But the hardtop and the four door, um, that is a retrofitable, but it involves a lot of cutting. <laughs> we uh, we put them onto a paceman. Really? Yep. That didn't have rough rails, and it was actually very easy. You only have to drill, you know, a dozen holes, and <laughs> yeah. holes on, and you're done. Well, there you go. So, all right. Well, let's move on. There you go. Yeah. So, so considering, uh, and we're just going to segue from from sales, like we said, and that mini sales are up, and I think they're going to continue to. <clears throat> we're not going to see 2013 levels. Like, mini is not going to sell 60,000 cars uh, in the USA again. I don't think they'll ever get back to that point. That's my personal opinion. Um, It'll be a while. Yeah, I don't think they're ever going to get back to that point. But, however, it, the good news for many fans and not for Fiat fans, Fiat killed the, the Fiat 500. Oh, the, that's right. They killed that car, which means that dun, the dun, Mini dun. is the, the, the last man standing, if you will, of the retro style you know, comeback Re- car. Exactly. That's the last Starting one. The Beetle, yep. They built the last Beetle this summer. That's right. Uh, no longer uh, making that. The PT the, went yep. away. The PT Cruiser went away quite yep. a few years ago, as did the HHR. Yeah. But the, and, it, and that I other crazy know. thing that Chevy was building, that weird pickup truck thing. The SSR. The SSR. Yeah, that's, that's been right. gone for a long time. That's been gone for a long time. And then we had the Fiat 500. Camaro's yeah. on its way out. Yeah, but that's not really a retro design, though, I'd say. Mm, I, I would think, say so. Well, the, then would you say the Mustang's a retro design as well? No, because it doesn't look like an old Mustang. <laughs> okay, fair enough. The, new the Camaro, Camaro looks like a '69 Camaro. The, really the Camaro does. looks like a '69 Camaro. Fair enough. Okay, okay. okay. There's still a uh, the char the, the Charger, the Challenger, or what, yeah, but, what they, those, but they've got know. those backwards and they don't look anything like the originals, so it doesn't matter. Those don't count because um, yeah. the Mini's so the Mini Mini's going to be the last one because it's top of saying the Fiat 500 is done. Yeah, they're still going to make the the X and the L mm-hmm. on the. L and the L or whatever their SUVs are. The ugly ones. They're gonna yeah, the ones that are the 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 larger one is not as bad. The L is pretty horrible. Oh the L is still horrible, but the other one isn't Todd's right. It's oh, it's bad, but it's not as bad. Yeah, yeah, it's not as bad. But they're they're doing that, which it just kinda is foretelling that uh the US market because that's uh what uh Fiat Chrysler, right? Yeah, right. Um yep. you know, FCA. FCA. They're, FCA. Yeah. Yeah, Fiat Chrysler America, they're kind of going the way that everybody else is saying small cars are dead. You know, Ford's no longer making cars. The only car Ford has in their lineup for the U.S. is the Mustang. Right. That's it. No more Focus. No more anything. No more even the even the sedan they were making is gone. Yep. Uh, what was it? The Fusion. The that Fusion. Was pretty popular. Yeah. Gone. Gone. So, so and yeah. Chrysler's finally decided, hey, we're not going to sell the. I mean, you look at sales of the Fiat 500, they're pretty, they're even way worse than Mini was. Yeah. So Volvo still makes a nice sedan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, (laughs) they do. BMW BMW makes a really nice sedan. Yeah. And BMW's almost gotten rid of the two doors is the thing. I know, which is really too bad. Yeah, yeah. So the coupes are... You know, becoming a dying breed, also. But anyway, um, I think Honda's next. If we see Honda fall and they start dropping, uh, you know, cars, yeah. like like if Honda, does, this God forbid, this ever happens, if Honda were to kill the Accord, oh, you could dude. you could fork in if if a, you, but you know what? If Honda stopped selling the Accord, Toyota would stop selling the Camry. Then yeah. life as we know it would cease to exist. There are some serious <laughs> issues happening. If yep, those yep. two, if those two occurrences actually happen, no, honestly, if like if Honda honestly couldn't sell any more Honda Accords because people stopped buying them, Toyota stopped selling Camrys because people stopped buying them, no, something and, is wrong, very, well, very wrong. Here's the, here's where I think it's good news for Mini is I think BMW has has com, is, they're committed to the brand, yeah, and in the U.S. it's still a viable brand. It's yeah. 
you know, like I said, I don't think we're going to get back to the point where we're selling 60,000 or 100,000 cars in a year. That's not going to happen. No. It's not going to do that. But with being the last man standing, the last kind of cool small car out there, and they're building the best built Mini they've ever made, mm -hmm. I think if they can hold out long enough, they'll be just fine. You know, all of the doomsday sayers who are like, oh, Mini's dead in the U.S., and Blah, blah, blah. Well, that was no, us. Can... That was <laughs> us. <laughs> let's, let's tell it like it is. That was us. <laughs> that was, that was, that was <laughs> but, like, they need to bring the design. Really bring the design. Which, hey, that segues into the next story. Minnie's Look got a at new... that, Chad. Well done. I, I got you back, guys. Yeah. <laughs> a new exterior designer by the name of, and I, I, I hope I pronounce this right, Thomas Saika. For I, yeah, we're going to say what you said. Um, if you get the chance, I mean, I'm not going to go over it a lot, but if you haven't read the article about him, go over to Motoring File. Uh, there's a nice kind of a Q&A, if you will. But then there's a big release about it. And, and he looks like Bruce Campbell. And, <laughs> and uh, I, what I can say is after reading this, I really have hope for the brand. Yeah. And for the future. This guy, the way he talks – it's inspiring, and it kind of brings back the feelings we had back in the early 2000s when we fell in love with these cars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the the philosophy is coming back, and they've really come back around, and they're going to shun the whole idea of this is a car for everybody. It's not. Right. You know, many it, – it's, it's never going to be a mass market, you know – everybody's going to want to buy this car. And I think they've realized that from 2014 to where we are now, five years later that, Hey, this whole premium upscale, everybody, you know, it's a great car for anyone. No, it's not. Not everybody likes a mini. Right. And it's not, and it's not practical for everybody. So right. uh, it's time to just embrace the quirkiness and yeah. go, you know what? We're going to embrace this brand and go back to the heart of what it was developed. You know, the reasons that, it became a car in 1959. So yeah, have, I'm going to link this one up. I'm really disappointed. There's no comments over at motoring file. So yeah. I'm going to go link this one up in the show notes, guys. I want you to just click through and uh, let us know what you think. Be really, really curious to hear. And as far as designer stuff goes, I mean, sometimes I kind of roll my eyes at the things designers say. Yeah. And, you know, Gabe's not on here because he's one of them. <laughs> 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 but, Zing. Yeah, I know. Gabe's a good guy. I I, uh, I love the guy. Uh, but I didn't get a lot of that from listening to uh, the kind of comments he had. It di he didn't seem arrogant or kind of over esoteric or whatever you want to you know term it. Yeah. He seemed kind of down to earth, down to earth, and understands the brand. And I think we there's a good future there. Now, granted, it's going to take four to five years for us to see anything kind of the fruits of his labors here right but i have hope that you know what Minnie's going to start getting back to what it was because it's what built it it's what made it great in the united states and it was great until 2014 <laughs> and then the bottom kind of fell out right well it's so. yeah we don't need to go into that yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, that's talk. good stuff. Like I said, I'm going to link that story up to that guy. Um, we're going to so we can talk about that some more in the comments or in the chat thing, which we're going to talk about at the end of the show. OK, what else you got? That's it. Floating, floating center caps. Oh, I mean, floating center caps. Thank you. And he goes Rolls Royce style. Uh, yeah, these are all over my Internet. I don't know if you guys saw these or not. I'm sure you did. Todd, of course, already has a set. Duh. Um, but uh, center caps for your wheels. That always stay up, but the, the JCW ones, and so it always says John Cooper works. And the logo's always properly centered and facing in the correct direction. They're, they're, pretty, they're expensive, aren't they? Yeah, close to 100 bucks for a set. Yeah, but I know you nerds are going to go buy them, right? Yeah. When you consider regular center caps, they're like 1250 just the normal <laughs> press fit ones. Yeah, but these, <laughs> these dude, if you're a JCW man, it's going to always say JCW. It's always going to be floating the right way. Well, and then when you drive, Minnie's posted a couple of uh, little videos of them, too, in their social media accounts. Yeah. And they float just like the Rolls Royce ones do. As the car's driving, they kind of stay level as they don't move when you're driving. Wow. It's pretty cool. Dude, that's cool. So I'm going to have to, uh, like, mount my GoPro. I think you're going to be able to get Mini ones, too. So not just JCW, but Mini, too. 
Yes, yes, you can. They're they're both. There's John Cooper works, and then there's and also then, and there's also mini ones. Got it. Yep. Ones that right. say just. I so, want to say regular mini ones might be a couple of bucks cheaper, but I don't know. Don't quote me on that. All right, all right. Anyway, these will probably be available at your uh, dealer parts desk if you want to go check. Link in the show notes. But these look kind of cool. I'd put them on my car. Yeah, they're they're very cool. And you know, I got to say that the automotive press in general has really picked up on these because I saw so many articles. I saw the, like a ton of articles about these. Jalopnik, Autoblog, a whole bunch of people posted about these. Yeah, yeah. They're like, because everybody goes, we're used to seeing these on a Rolls Royce. That was kind of the original right. company that did that. And hey, it's a, it's a, it, they're related. Yeah. Yeah, they're all <laughs> owned by each other now. That's right. BMW owns Mini and Rolls Royce. Yes. So I'm like, whoever thought of this, this is just indicative, just as a follow up again of what I was saying, because yeah. I think Mini's getting the fun back in the brand. Yes, you know? agreed. Little thing like this, that you know what? Yeah, it's expensive, ninety hundred bucks for a set of them, yeah. but it's not unreachable for most people who, right. who who go look at what I've got that nobody else has. Right. You know. Right. Exactly. So, I think it's bringing the spirit back, and I applaud Mini for for doing that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I hope it just, I, I hope they keep it coming. Yeah, me too. I agree. Let's see what happens. Uh, so in the news from motorfile.com and other things. Let's, before we continue, let me rem- take a moment. Let's remind you about another one of the fine sponsors here underneath the white roof. Our friends over at OutMotoring, OutMotoring.com. Um, on the front page tonight, I clicked through and there's a whole bunch of really cool driver gear, travel, luggage, mugs. You want mini luggage, coffee mugs, umbrellas? Um, bicycles, bounce bicycles, pedal cars, shovels. What is it you want that's mini branded? Aaron's got it. Outmotoring.com. I'm going to link this page up specifically in the show notes. I want you to click over. I want you to check it out and get yourself sorted out. Christmas is coming up. Get something for your favorite mini lover. This is all the cool accessories that everybody's going to want. Get it now before they sell out. That's over at outmotoring.com. Don't forget, when you get over there, you're going to see a spot sign up for the newsletter. Make sure you sign up. Aaron does not send out a lot of emails. You're going to get an email from Aaron way less often than anybody else that you get emails from, including your parents. All right? Uh, And when you get it, you're going to get a 5% discount code. Super duper awesome, Um, which we love that. Also, don't forget to, and when you do that too, is you're going to be able to sign up so you can get rewards. You get points. Everybody likes to get points when they shop. Aaron's going to make sure you get the right parts for your car because he's going to tell you which R50 whatever F74 numbers on your car. He's going to let you know and make sure you get the right one, even though I know you nerds know which one it is. But just in case, you never know. Uh, If you belong to a mini club and I know you guys have a Christmas party coming up or some big group drive and you're looking for a little bit of extra support, all you got to do is ask. Just shoot him a message. He'll send you something. Something out of the swag closet. It could be a gift certificate. You never know. Just all you got to do is ask. Uh, free shipping, most orders over $195, 100% happiness guarantee, and a hitch for your mini. So you can carry a bicycle without having to have one of those crappy $20 racks from Amazon on the back of your roadster like I do. Don't be like me. Go over to outmotoring.com. Get yourself a hitch for your mini. And then, you know, all these other cool things. Go over and do all that now. Okay? Okay, cool. We love this stuff. So do you. That's our friends. Again, over at Outmotoring. Outmotoring.com. Mini Performance, Speed, and Mini JCW Go-Karts. Like on special for 200 bucks. This is the coolest pedal car ever. That's Outmotoring.com. What else did we have? We had something else. I, there think were, we, I thought there was something else. Wasn't there something else? No. I no, think. I think we covered it. All right. Yeah, I think it's all there. I think it's all there. I think we're done. Good. We just don't know what to do with ourselves because we're, you know, we're done early. Yeah. I, well, I'm. I, this is my announcement well in advance here, two months in advance. I won't be going to SEMA this year. Todd's not going to SEMA. That's what the other thing it was. Yeah. It's, too exp- it's too expensive. And, and last year, I mean, Chad had a good time. It was your first time at SEMA. Yeah. Uh, but, but I also decided that I'm not going this year either. Yeah, because I'm like, um, there, there was too many trucks. Too many SUVs. Way SUV. too many trucks. Way too many trucks. <laughs> oh, was, you know was, what? Check this out. This would be fun. Chad... Is maybe going to be in Palm Springs in, Oct- in oh. October. Oh yeah, right. Let's let that's a, we're, that's all we're saying. We're just saying that Chad is maybe going to be in Palm Springs in October. Who? I mean, I'll buy you a drink. Who wants to go to Palm Springs in October? Everybody. Let's let's see about this. This could be a fun thing. It's going to be a weekend too, kind of. 
Let's see if there's any interest. Chad, remind me the dates. It was 16 to what? 16th to the 19th, but it really Six- is going to be the 17th and 18th would be viable. 17th. So the only problem with those is those are, those are weekdays. Week, the 18th weekdays, is a yeah. Thursday. Okay. I fly out on the 19th. So So this is what we got. Chad's going to be in Palm Springs in those dates. Who's in? Take that personal day. Yeah. Who's in? <laughs> it's get the back. end of the year. You can't save them until next year. You can't. You get to save, you can save like 30 hours. It's ridiculous. Um, hit us up in the show notes or in the common thing I'm going to talk about here in a minute. See anybody who might be interested. Maybe a little impromptu White Roof Radio meetup. I'll bring the road start. It'll be fun. It'll be a hoop. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, otherwise, let's be done. Yes. Yes, we are going to be done. Before we are done, I want to remind you guys about something. I would like for you very much to try this. This is a new thing I'm trying on the bike show. I want you guys to try it too. I already told the Patra, the Black Roof Radio kids about this. And let's see if you can get on it too. I'd like you to go over to flickapp.com. And this is going to let you download an app. So do this on your phone. doesn't matter if you're on iOS or Android. It's flickapp.com. What it is, it's going to let you have a chat about a specific episode on White Roof Radio. And we have access to it. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And right now, there's not even any ads. So it's actually kind of a cool thing. And it seems to be completely legit. I've been playing with it now for a couple weeks. And I like it. I like it a lot. I think you guys might like it too. And it's called Flick. And you can get the app in the App Store. doesn't matter which App Store you roll in. You can get it for both. Go over to FlickApp.com. Once you get installed and you create your account, I want you to use the code of White Roof Radio. And that is going to take you right to the White Roof Radio chat. And you're going to see all the different episodes that we have chat for. And you can leave a comment. We can have a little conversation. It doesn't really matter. Post a picture. Say hi. It's going to be cool. And you know what? It's better than stupid Facebook. <laughs> okay. I hate stupid can, Facebook. Can you tell we've all grown to hate Facebook? I just don't like Facebook. Anyway, flickapp.com on your phone. We'll send you a link directly to the app store of your choosing, whichever you happen to roll in. Like I said, use the code of white roof radio, and that's going to get you right into the show chat. It's really actually kind of cool. I learned about this from one of the, my nerdy podcast friends that I'm really good friends with. And it's, he's, he's having a lot of really good success and having a lot of fun with it with his show. And I think we'll have a lot of fun with it with our show as well. It's like the secret clubhouse for white roof radio flick.com. Use the code or flick app.com. Use code white roof radio. Ready? Go done. Perfect. Don't forget our friends over at CravenSpeedOutMotoring.com. There's going to be links to all that uh, Craven Speed stuff that I talked about. There's going to be links to that in the show notes. There's going to be a link to that cool pedal cart that Aaron's selling it out motoring. I'm going to link it up in the show notes too. So if you're looking for those directly, I'm just going to, they'll be right there for you. Easy to find. Okay. Cool. What else? We asked the last episode and nobody got back to us. So we're going to ask again. This is going on with meeting up with Chad in Palm Springs. Is there any interest? at all even if it's a little maybe interest like maybe with a question mark written in pencil on trace paper of getting together in las vegas and doing a white afraid of meetup yes i'm interested well, i know todd you're interested you're in <laughs> vegas every other week so it doesn't matter I'm talking to you in be right White Roof right. Radio Land, um, and we're not. I'm not talking about an Amvim style event. No, no. Think more cars and coffee, right? There's a dead Kmart in that town somewhere. We're gonna take over the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? Think more. Think more. Mini fans drinking, gambling, yes. and have fun. Yeah, just hanging out. It'll be a lot of fun, right? <sighs> no group drives. Not crap. Just gonna just one night in Vegas, or maybe two nights, right? We're gonna go hang out and just do cool things. Who's interested? No mattresses will be involved. Maybe right. There, there, there's not going to be any kind of organization. <laughs> Literally, it's going to be, we're all just going to show up in Vegas and say, okay, cool. Meet at Jack's Pub at 8 o'clock on Friday night. Let's go. Except Jack's Pub for Club. 50, Jack's please. Pub doesn't exist Jack's anymore. Pub doesn't exist anymore, but you know what I mean. It's going to be like that, right? Exactly. I think it'd be cool. I think it'd be a lot of fun. And it, we're saying this because we miss Ambiv, right? And Anvil yeah. is not going to come back. Southwest Mini Fives might come back, but I doubt that as well. So let's just take it upon ourselves to at least get together sometime in March, maybe, right? And just hang out. I think it'd be fun. If you're interested, let us know. Info or feedback, whiterefredo.com. Leave it on the show notes. Do whatever you want to do. Ping us on Twitter. Use stupid Facebook. But don't send me a message on Facebook. Don't send Todd a message on Facebook because, you know, really quick, and then we're going to be done. <laughs> when you guys send Todd a message on Facebook, let me tell you the, the workflow that happens here. 
Okay. The behind the behind the scenes that has to go on. So you post a message to Todd on Facebook. Todd doesn't. First of all, he doesn't get that message. I get the message. <laughs> so because Todd can't be bothered, Todd, Todd, and and Chad sees it sometimes too. Because Todd can't be bothered with stupid Facebook. He just can't. He he could be bothered less than the rest of us, right? And and just for those of you who are wondering, yes, all of our Facebook pages are practically intertwined, so we all have access to everybody else's shit because it just makes things easier. Um, but so when you message Todd, he doesn't get it. I get it, and then I have to send it to him, usually as a screenshot text message, to see. <laughs> and then I have to tell you to go to Motoring Stripes and use a contact form because I don't get those. Todd gets those. So if you need to contact Todd, go to Motoring Stripes. Dot com and use contact form. Stop using stupid Facebook, please. We hate stupid Facebook. And when you're really trying to actually contact a business, the social media outlet of your choice is not always the best way to do it no. also. And if you are doing it, actually, Twitter is better than Facebook sometimes. And only or sometimes. Inst- or even Instagram. Uh, email. Like, email only is, after a phone call. Yeah, email or a phone call. Yep. Chad, you're right, 100%. Stop being a child. Yep. Call. Your phone, your phone makes phone calls. Well, Voice thing, calls. I, nor I can fix your car via Instagram. I know. And some people look, DB, and they're like, oh, yeah, you post on Facebook. And I'm like, no, Instagram posts for me. Yes. <laughs> Instagram is where my pictures go. Yes. Occasionally, they'll show up on Facebook also. Yes. Yes. So. Stupid Facebook. If they're this not, you know, like drinking Vegas. Related. So that's the behind the scenes. When you post Todd and message to Todd on Facebook, it actually goes through me. So you're posting a message to me. So if you're going to continue to at least say hi to me. I have people. You have to get to me. You have to go through my people. That's <laughs> I'm not, really, and, and see, and the thing is, say? is I'm not his people. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I have other people. You know, I have local people. DB's my West Coast representation. <laughs> yeah, I'm the West Coast representative of motoringstripes.com. Good grief. Just go over to motoringstripes.com. Use contact form. Also, no else is a really handy thing to use contact form at motoringstripes.com. That's how you get the white roof radio sunroof delete kit. You have a sunroof on your mini, and you like it when it's open. You don't like it when it's closed. You don't like the cabana effect like me. I hated that. Todd will cut you vinyl that you can install yourself simply that will completely cover your sunroof in the color of your roof. And all you have to do is send him a message using the contact form. Send him a hundred bucks. He's going to send it back. Done and done. Perfect. Motoringstripes.com. Now we're done. Poo. We covered there's a lot. All, there's all sorts of new stuff over there, too. There's all there. kinds of new stuff. Um, I'm looking at uh, all kinds of new. You got a lot of grill badges back, which is really nice. The bumper strip. Uh, the, the, the decal for the center of your wings that fades. Yeah. Lots of cool stuff. Go over to motoringstripes.com and just go check it all out. It's really and awesome. A hey, uh, rare for everybody who is downloading Flick right now. When you're entering the promo code of white roof radio there are no spaces it is one word oh complete. one word all one word white roof radio thank you very much Chad. i saw that you did just join thank you very much sir you're and, welcome i'm gonna i'm gonna join in with everybody yeah it's a good time and also too when you're over at motoring stripes com, don't forget the uh, almost patent pending bumper strips for all the cars save your back bumper todd's got you covered and if you're not anywhere near todd they are all stock and available for purchase online at detroit.com at Detroit exactly see you know what else is really nice about all this guys and you guys probably know this but i want you guys to think about this if you're still with us because you're a hardcore fan you're the ones that care you're the ones that are on facebook on stupid facebook in those stupid facebook groups where people are posting uh, links to weird stuff stop posting things that links to weird stuff be the guy be the guy that goes to out motoring to get the right part for somebody to actually say, here's the part that you want be the guy that goes over to motoring badges or motoring stripes to find the thing from todd that they need or detroit tuned and post that link do it for the community help out your Cheap fellow mini owner because i'm telling you that the the shit that you buy from china on amazon so bad is shit it really is it doesn't and they've started doing it on uh, on Etsy now too. Yeah. I saw somebody buy something on on Etsy, something mini related, yeah. and I'm like, usually that's kind of like somebody, some crafty people. Yeah, yeah. homemade stuff. No, nope, no, nope, it's coming from Shanghai now. They've, wow. They've, they figured a way into starting, Etsy. Etsy, and then it's just that's really cheap, disappointing. Cheap Chinese crap. That is really disappointing. 
That makes me sad. Yeah, well, can't be sad forever. Time to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, gang, thanks for sticking around. Uh, appreciate you listening. Appreciate you downloading, checking out the flick thing. We're going to do that. It's going to be cool. Uh, you have homework, right? We're looking for who wants to hang out in Palm Springs with Chad next month. Who wants to hang out in Vegas with Todd and Chad and maybe Gabe and maybe everybody um, and maybe in March of 2020. Okay, that's your homework. And then we also want you to go and read the article. I'm going to link this up in the show notes about the new uh, exterior designer for Mini USA. Mini, pardon me. And I want your comments about this guy. Okay, got it? Good. Yes. Then I think we're done. That means this is the part of the show where I do like to make that funny clicking sound. And then I like to say questions, comments, or concerns. Go ahead, click back over to whiteroofradio.com. There you can leave us a note in the show notes. You can also email us feedback, whiteroofradio.com. Until next time, gang, this is DB. I'm done. Cheers. See ya. Peace out, bitches. I forgot to do my public service announcement, too, which is do not uh, um, uh, uh, attempt to eat uh, Flaming Hot Cheetos. (laughs) Jesus. And do literally anything else. Because <laughs> that shit, True. That's, that shit that's on the Flaming Hot Cheetos, yeah, gets on you and gets on everything. Yeah, like literally, if you're gonna try them, and they're good, they're addictive. Yeah, um, they're not. They're, they're, I was thinking too... it was gonna be like a fiery butthole. <laughs> <laughs> they're really not that hot. I think Takis are hotter. They're, but, they're not uh, that. They're not that hot. They're but, really salty though. And, and honestly. Flam- you're much too old to be giving tips about Flaming Hot Cheetos. I'm just saying. I, well, the problem is that... <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem is, is you end up with Flaming Hot Cheetos. That, that's what happens when you drink too much and you take Uber to the grocery store. So, <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean I can't talk about Doritos? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs>